No, it's been good. I mean, obviously we've all been locked down with not much to do, but um, rather have have your wife with you than be alone. So I'm very lucky that um, I had Hannah with me, and um, yeah, we're getting through it just fine. We were um, planning, obviously, to go away for a holiday in the summer, like we normally would. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've been able to make the most of it. Um, it's been pretty quiet here, but uh, at least there's a few of us still at Racecourse Gardens and we're going out for lunch when we can and to the beach and things like that. So it's not been all bad. Um, we're quite active. Um, Hannah, Hannah gets up and goes for a hike um, pretty much before I'm even home from track work. And, um, then I'll do my, my workout in the morning and then we'll have a bit of lunch together. And then um, again, we'll work out in the afternoon. So um, yeah, Anna, Hannah's also got her horse out at Bees River. So she keeps, she keep, that keeps her nice and busy. And um, yeah, we just do as much as we can really. Uh, quite hard, as you can see, she's, she's quite beautiful, but um, yeah, it took, took a bit of work, but we got there in the end. I don't know where that was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do remember seeing Chad for the first time uh, in the office that I worked in. He came to ride for my boss, and I was working in the office of a trainer in Newmarket. So I do actually vividly remember that day when you came in, you landed from Australia uh, to the UK and came straight to work to meet us. And mm. I actually had to file all his his visa and stuff for working in the UK. Um, so I knew a lot about him before we actually came face to face. But yeah, I'd say I was, um, I got all blushed and um, embarrassed when we first met. So yeah, it was a bit of love at first sight. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> yeah, well, like, like she just said, when I walk, walked into the, the office for the first time I met her, I thought, wow, who's, who's this girl? I'd like to get to know her better. and. Uh, I think I asked her for dinner or lunch or something and just took it from there. Um, I came to visit Chad actually uh, a few months before I moved to, we spent time in the UK together and then I took a holiday and came out here. Um, I guess he wooed me with a few nice dinners and a, uh, we had a lot of fun. And so yeah, I decided to quit my job and pack up my bag come here but it was it was quite a quick decision um, but I took the risk I didn't have anything to lose and I could always just go back home if it didn't work out but thankfully it did and we are. Oh, I had no idea what to expect honestly I mean my grandparents lived here about 30 years ago so grandma told me a, a bit but I didn't I didn't take much of it on board I was expecting just a big city and I grew up in the country, lived in the country in the UK my whole life. So I was expecting just skyscrapers and, and cars going past all the time. But we're lucky we live out a little bit, I guess, in the countryside of Hong Kong. Oh. It's a lot quieter. We've got our dogs and my horse. And so I try and sort of make it a bit more like home life. Um, but I love it. I mean, you get the best of both worlds here. We're right near the city, um, but we're also out too far from the beach and stuff, so, I mean, I'm very glad to be here. I know she's very supportive. Um, a good day or a bad day, it's always nice to, to have Hannah to come back home to. She definitely lifts you up if you have, have a bad day and go for a nice meal and start all again fresh on Monday. No, she's great to have. Um, I do get worried watching the races. Obviously, I try and block all the negative thoughts out of my head when the when the race starts. But I sort of watch every race from start to finish. My eyes glued on him. I often don't see if something else goes on in the race because I've got my eye on him. But yeah, I do can get carried away a little bit cheering sometimes. Um, I kind of feel like we're a team, so yeah, I cheer them on every race. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there have been some races that aren't as fun to watch, and I do worry, and um, you see some, some nasty falls, but we always, I always um, say good luck and be careful every time you leave before races, and um, so far, so good.
can be. Um, just got to, like you said, you just got to keep working out and staying positive in the right frame of mind. Um, and uh, that, that just leads on to, to positive thinking. And it's very easy to get down the dumps right now, but you just can't let that happen. You got to stay upbeat and keep keep pushing on. I mean, it's, it's hard when you're in the middle of a pandemic and there's not much else to do to stay off social media. But I, you know, I agree that it's probably not for the for the best. You know, although the whole world is going through this together, so you do see a lot of nice things that people are saying and doing to keep everyone else upbeat on social media. That's one positive. Um, but yeah, for us, I think being kind of active, we as long as we can get out for the day and do something and go see my horse or we walk the dogs or go to the beach or something, it's something that sort of clears your mind and keeps you relatively sane. Yeah, obviously we, we, we've spoken about it in depth and at the moment we're, we're very content and happy here in Hong Kong. Um, like Hannah said before, we love the city very much and I love the racing here, so um, we, we hope to stay as long as possible, really. Yeah, I'm not ready to leave anytime soon. Um, obviously, yeah. hopefully one day we'd love to have a family. We're in a building where there's heaps of kids running around all the time. There's so much fun. I mean, it, it looks fun from the outside. I'm not sure uh, how fun it will be on a day-to-day -day basis, but yeah, that's in the future somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, we've been married a year now and I think it's, you know, it's obviously the next logical step to take and we're very, very excited for it to, um, to be hopefully not too far away. Yeah, I think um, Chad would be a really good dad at some point, so it'll be fun to see Thank that you. side of him. Everybody, what's better than winning the World Cup? The Kentucky Derby. <laughs> This season on Jockeys. Oh, there you go. Odds are very tough. I don't like losing. Hopefully make it to the Kentucky Derby. I want to be in the Derby. The one race that everybody says, what do you want to win? It's the Kentucky Derby. What an amazing ride. I think it'd be great. I mean, I actually, I remember watching that, that program um, those years ago. It used to be shown on Animal Planet from memory. Um, but I really enjoyed that show and I think um, it'll be pretty pretty cool and exciting thing to do in, in Hong Kong. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'd go with having cameras in my house, but <laughs> it must have been interesting. And I think that a lot of people, well, we take for granted um, how exciting uh, racehorses and like the life around it. So I think it would definitely be interesting to watch from an outsider. Um, and yeah, there are so many interesting characters Hong Kong racing, so it could be interesting. <laughs> I think it's all about, um, you know, when there's about, what, 25 jockeys in Hong Kong, um, it's about getting to know everyone. Like, there are so many people that do go a little bit more unnoticed because perhaps they're not riding, or winning or riding in some of the bigger races. And um, I think it's all about the edge of it that's so interesting and that there's all these characters all these jockeys and the trainers and whatever the vets and the stewards um i think that's what's that's what's interesting and that's how you'll grab a younger audience because a lot of the jockeys now are also you know in their 20s um still and they provide quite a lot of entertainment um and i think that's it seeing behind the scenes is what people who aren't necessarily racing fanatics want to see they want to see how it all comes together before race day and um, to be the show that it is. Well, I think it just depends on what type of audience you want to target. I mean, you know, the, the, the people sitting at home who are diehard racing fans, they, they might want to see the horses walk around the parade ring, whereas a young person might want to watch something, something else. So. It, the gaps in between races are quite short, um, which which restricts which restricts it a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure on that question. I think it just depends um, what kind of target audience you'd be looking at. Well, I think, like you say, um, I remember always at home as much as I watched a bit of racing 
for work, like I love watching the fashion side of things too, um, especially on bigger race days. And especially in Australia, they do the fashions on the field really well. Um, and it's like a whole event, a whole other event. Like you say, one channel will show predominantly the racing, whereas another channel might show some celebrity going around the races and, and seeing the different fashions and seeing what people are wearing. Um, that is another interesting side of it. And it's something that we don't really have in Hong Kong at the moment um, on that scale. Um, but yeah, and definitely the live music, that was something that was really popular amongst non-racing fanatics in the UK. Like we, I remember going to Newmarket races on a Friday night um, and after the racing had finished, there'd be uh, a famous singer or a band there. And that definitely attracted a lot of attention from non-typical non racing fans. So that was really cool. Uh, we've got two beagles. Um, yeah, so they're pretty two naughty. noisy beagles. Naughty and noisy, yeah. Uh, Toby and Oscar, they're like our children. We spend all day with them and, you know, take them out every morning and go to the beach with them and, and things like that. They, they, they come over with us almost. <laughs>